but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. Sick. You need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But it gets you better. You need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. This is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have a conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I can be like you. But you could be me. You know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. You man school. 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. Rawr! GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited in the corona lockdown. We're Ugh. streaming live. The Man School 202 podcast. Harry, how are you doing? You feeling good? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. All things considered, everything is good. Everybody I know is uh, healthy, and so I'm good. It's all good. I don't like that you flaunting your fucking hair messed up. Like what are you, you talking just wear about? It messed this is up just my shit. corona hair, bro. I can't, yeah. You know what I mean? It's that nasty hair. ass mustache. What are you talking about? This is beautiful. <laughs> He's still doing the fucking Hitler the shit. The fucking not a Hitler mustache. mustache. Shit. I hate this. The what? <laughs> That's Fight how it grows. Shit you got, nigga. Cut That's, that. Yo, uh, special guest in the building. We've been trying to get this dude on the show for uh hot minute for a while and just you know so busy and nobody ain't doing shit so i can so i can get him now so we're finally able uh, to guilt him into being on the show comedy central z rock i'm going back old credits uh uh what's the special what's your hour special one last one you did the, the crowd work joint i, I went I, to hall was what comedy central and then i did the degenerates and the degenerate oh, oh, you just did gen, gen, dope dope yo give it up for my dog uh, Big J Okasin, y'all give it up for Big J. Yo, thanks, Jay. Thanks for doing this, man. I appreciate you a lot. You know, I love you to death. Absolutely, dude. Do me a favor, vamp for a minute, because I you just reminded me I should go get a joint myself. Oh, oh yeah. nice. Yeah. No worries. Go do it. Do it. We'll talk about it. By the way, we'll, uh, we'll talk about it. I got it. I'll, I'll show you some shit when you come back. Dre, check this out. Just the new shit. I can't even share with Andre like that. With um, with Harry like that. Check this shit out right here, yo. This is the new, the new improved. That's a dab pen. That's a dab pen. Comes in a case with the charger. You just flip it up, so I don't look like a fucking. I don't look like a fucking savage. You know what I mean? <laughs> Ellie, you, know, you have a guy that you Ellie, go into. Look, like, remember James Bond will go in and look, like get all I the keep new. Keep my gadgets. resin in there. There's a little resin in the case. Mm. Little compact case. Boop. Just in the pocket. Real sexy, like I'm a grown ass man. You know what I mean? None of this. <laughs> none man. of this. I feel like we could almost convince Dante to start doing nothing heroin. is better than that. What? what you bugging? Don't fuck with then that. the classic bud? Oh. Yo, I can't fuck with the classic bud. I don't so even nice. smoke. You got a joint? <laughs> Christine's got to roll one. Uh, I don't even smoke joints no more. Uh, Jay, like, you bugging. You're the best. I just do resin or resin or like resin and dab. Nothing but resin and dab. Look, it's funny, it's funny you say that, that that's what you've uh, advanced to, resin and dab, because 10 years ago or so. Well, oh, yes. Uh, Canada. Eight or nine, it's going to be nine years ago. Yeah, we was in Canada. We went to Canada, and that guy, that was when dabs was a new thing. Yeah. And they had to do it with like they brought in this whole it looked like a game of mouse trap. It was a glass, like a fucking torch. It was a glass yeah. thing, torch, a piece the, of the screen. It was crazy. And then they just put the little oil on it and we did it. And Dante in the lobby of Comedy Club, it was just like a comedy room in the back of this weed, weed dispensary. Spot. Not weed dispensary, it was like a head shop or something. Yeah, yeah. And uh, everybody can smoke weed in the back showroom and the show the bust festival. 
and the show ended up not happening. Thank God, because <laughs> somewhere else uh, uh, in that play, he th- he took that dab and, and the head went back. It wasn't. <laughs> it was just a, he was doing a different thing at that point. <laughs> I was like, uh, I was like, Jay, you think the show? You think the show's gonna go on? <laughs> he was like, Yeah, yeah, I think it's gonna go. I was like, No, it ain't. <laughs> hey, like, that lady was brilliant, though. That lady who ran that place, Joey. I've, I've known her over the years now. I don't know if uh-huh. it's functioning, but uh, it was the best idea because in the back you could smoke weed. You could bring your own weed and smoke it. There right. was a loophole in the law that made that okay. Right. She sold up front was like super flavored sodas and like Cheetos and shit and Doritos. Oh, so she just cleaned up with the junk food. Just cookies, she just cookies and sell them and stuff. But like if you were performing, she just gave them so. Me and Dante just ate snacks and smoked some new fang. Oh, God. I, was, I was, yo, I was like, uh, Jay, I don't think we're doing the show. And he was like, no, nah, no, nah, they, they're probably going to do it. We'll just wait a while. And I was like, Jay, I can't get out. I can't, I can't get out of the fucking, I can't get up. And he was like, no, nah, no, nah, you'll be fine. You know, it feels like that. And I was like, no. Nah. <laughs> and, and I was like, I was like, yo, I had I, I had the Jeep back then, but it wasn't all souped up. No. And uh, and I was like, Jay, you got to drive my truck. I couldn't even drive the truck. And I, I yeah. got up and I was walking like I was stepping over uh, baby gates. Like my- <laughs> <laughs> do, you know what, do you know a thing that haunted me for years from that trip? What's that? When we were driving home when I took a shift driving because we also, I don't think either of us realized in planning the trip because you're like, you know, you could drive to Montreal in like six hours, five and a half, six hours. Right. We're going to Toronto, and I'm like, they're not that far from each other. I thought we, we don't. Didn't eleven know hours. Far. It's very like, far from each other. It's sure, it's eleven hours. It's like New York and Chicago. It's like nine hours to get there. Nine and a half if you like stop at all. Yeah. And we also got stopped at the border as always. So that's another yeah. hour and a half. Yeah. Well, home when I was driving a shift. We got pulled over. Do you remember this? Yeah, yeah. We was on that dirt road with the with the uh, sheriff or some yeah, shit. And the cop, he came over and was taking all my information uh, for speeding, and he recognized me. Yeah. You know, oh, nice. And he goes, he's like, oh, it's really cool, man. It's cool to see you. It's cool to meet you. He goes, I'll be right back. And then he came back and gave me three tickets. <laughs> oh, shit. Why do that? Yeah. Why be the jerk off and do that? Either, either be a town. fan or don't. Yeah, but it's so funny in that bumfuck town like dealing with like the process of getting that like handle because it was like they were pretty dumb like shitty tickets the speeding i got but it was like right like my license was like bent or some shit i mean it was like shit like that he gave me tickets for really like to fight that in a small town like i'd have to go back to it so they just eat shit and like how much was the tickets the three tickets uh, i think it's probably like a total of like 400 some dollars and at the time <laughs> like you might as well have just told me like a bazillion dollars yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's crazy, man. We we've been around some crazy places, but man, I I don't do nothing but resin now. I, resident dab now. I don't. I I can't even smoke weed. When I smoke weed and I taste the ash, if it, it makes me sick, you know, like you know how like when you, somebody it was back in the days when people didn't smoke, and then you you know now if somebody's smoking a cigarette in style, you're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You yeah, fucking yeah. ass, you know, like it just it's, I, it feels like that for me now. You know, no, the smell. Yeah, it's not so much the smell, but the taste, the ash. I just edibles and vapes for me it's they're both the same thing it's all or nothing it's too much or nothing really so nothing oh, you can't find that sweet spot a problem like where i don't I feel good from it and so with with weed you could just smoke you know take a yep. take three four hits of a joint see how you feel yeah and right next to you and you can light it back up again in 15 minutes if you're like it's perfect yeah, can't right. get better Resin is easy because it's, it's so available to you that you, you hit it and then you hit it and then you hit it. And then... Were you ever a cigarette smoker, Dante? No, I never smoked cigarettes. Also, never smoked. That. If you're a cigarette smoker, it kind of satiates that thing too because I won't smoke cigarettes indoors at all, but I'll uh-huh. smoke cigarettes inside. Right. Oh, that, that smell dissipates. Shit, I never touched a cig. Mm-hmm. Honestly, no point in no tobacco. You still Unless smoke, right? Blunt, that's yeah, different. You still, you still smoke, right? Yeah, I'm trying to stop, but it's uh, what's so funny is like I one thing I never did that I think is such the sign of like pure depression and letdown. DJ Lou from a uh, bonfire. Yeah, right? yeah, I know Lou. We're doing the shows like you know on on Zoom now. Right, it's, right. It's funny watching him in his like small apartment, like just ripping butts during the whole show, and you're like, damn, dude, your place must smell like. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's um 
yeah, so just just to know to tell the fans and everybody, Jay Jay does the bonfire. I've been on the bonfire several times with them. Jay and good friends of mine, and Jay and fucking uh, and Dan <laughs> Soda. I mean, you know, we've been we had Dante's first experience with the bonfire. I felt so bad because Yamanika come came on again. Oh crazy. shit, Harry, you remember that, right? I told you that was the one with Doug Stanhope's. Uh... No, 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 that was different. No, 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 uh, no. It was after that. Yamanika just gets like intense. Oh yeah, yeah, we know. The thing with Stanhope, which by the way, I do think I think she got a bad rap on that Stanhope thing. Yeah, she did. She did. But, but not was- but the the thing with the other thing was the the Meet Me Outside chick. You know the the YouTube Meet Me Outside chick. Catch oh, me yeah, outside. Yeah. 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 Well, so well, yeah, I, I, well, it was funny. Was we took her off? What you're about to say, Doc? They came off of though in the beginning. We're trying to like go through funny shit going on, and we're like, you know, yeah. you don't think this is funny? Whatever it was we were doing, and she goes, I don't think anything's funny right now. You know, uh, the, the lady who said Emmett Till raped her just came out in the news and said that he didn't do anything and he was hung and whatever for nothing. This, yeah. white, this white bitch lied all these years ago. And we're like, okay. <laughs> like, so what, are we, what do we do with that? Don't know, like, favorite for that. Food or something. Yeah. And uh, next, let's go up to these cats wearing bread. How about yeah. that? <laughs> and we went, yeah, we went to commercial. And when we came back, I was like, uh, I go, oh, I was like, you know, the Catch Me Outside girl makes music now. And she was like, shut the fuck up. Get out of here. I was like, no, we'll come back. We'll, I'll rejoin you. We'll play one of her songs. And we right. came, I thought it'd be funny to like, you know, make fun of it or mm. talk to the situation. Whatever. And we came right back in. And I go, there she is, Yamanika. That's the Catch Me Outside girl now has produced like music into the millionaire. She's like, right. fucking white bitches. And it just came on like a whole racing. And, and then she was oh like, God. She, and I was like, and the, the thing was the whole time, the thing was, uh, are you advocating like because you know to see me the, the, the catch me outside chick is just she's just like this ratchet trailer park chick yeah. and just just awful because she came off of dr phil and i was like are you advocating that they should have gotten some ratchet little black girl to give her a deal so that she could embarrass because that's all she would that you know that's what yam would say is this is embarrassment to the race that this this bum bitch has got a deal and, da, 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 and, I, and it was just like well, Dante, she's yours now. Did you see? She turned her skin black. No, what? Oh, who did this? Oh, did this did catch, catch me outside, outside girl? Yeah, do you have, I don't know if you have like a share screen or yeah, something. Yeah, can, uh, Harry, can you get it or you want me to use? Uh, let me see. Let me follow. Let me she find got a, it. She had a, a, like, I think Cardi B said something about it now. Really? Yeah. Well, I don't even know her name, so I got to look it up by it, Catch uh, Me Catch Outside. Catch Me Outside, girl. No, 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 it's uh, look a bad B H A D B A D I E. Bad baby. Yeah. I named my car that, my hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, but Yam was like losing her shit, and I just was like sitting there like, okay. I, I was like. Oh, because we're trying to like have like funny and talk shit. And by the way, all those topics I'm willing to talk about, and make, but Yamanik was not in the mood for funny. Yeah, she just, was, she just went in like crazy. She was like laser uh, in on it. But yeah, it, right. it's, if you could pick one fast food burger the rest of your life, she, goes, she was yeah, like, fuck, burger. fuck, fuck you burger. white bitches. <laughs> yeah, <I> mean, <laughs> Yeah, there she goes. Oh, she yeah. does. She look like Cardi. Buddy, those titties are one year away from being legal. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, in, she in, went all the way in. Catches, here's it is, in slight defense of this girl. She's young one. She catches a lot of shit. She's a millionaire, so you can't feel too bad for her. But it is funny when, you know, she did a photo shoot. Yeah. And the people did the makeup on her the way they did the makeup on her. They did her hair the way they did her hair. It's not yeah, her. Right. Like she wouldn't know either way. Right, so in a video she put out recently, she's saying like, because everyone's going, she's trying to look black. She's like, it's the makeup guy. The thing's like, it's a photo shoot. So in, in a weird way, it's like she's always going to take that scrutiny, and she's kind of like, yeah, being shitty with me for something. It's like I didn't do it. Like I, so, I, did a photo I just shoot. saw she, this was something where she attacked the the Nickelodeon girl, the big eyed Nickelodeon girl. She got beef with the. <laughs> I didn't see that. No, I know she was having the gripe with the other, uh, with the other were just famous from the internet. It's that whoa, Vicky girl who really. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that girl should just be passed around in a fucking black dot com porn at this point. Let's see, uh, where's, let's see the world, Vicky. Never, never, Harry, you gotta see the world. <laughs> a, white girl, a white girl adopts a black accent so hard that it's almost like she might as well uh, be blackface. It's such a phony thing. Wow. Uh, you gotta know a beef. She wasn't like that before either. Yeah, let's see here. There is a fucking. That's a far poor. That's a, that's a four par golf hole between her eyes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yo, she looks. She. She's thinking she got she got an all right body and like she's uh, 
but she tried to do a video once saying that she found out in her DNA testing that she's partially black, and then her super white parents came out and like, There's, we're not black. Oh, man. And, then, <laughs> and she, st- she said some shit about Snoop Dogg in a video once, and then Snoop Dogg gave her like a, like a pat on the head, a very Patrice-esque <laughs> like, pat on the head, like, it's okay. I'm going to let it go because I know your kids, but just yeah. like, don't be stupid. And then they issued uh, an apology. If you could find the apology video, Harry, if you have the audio. We don't have the audio access on the Zoom. We can't yeah. hear it. Oh, no. 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 Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, you know, I don't have it as good as your show. You, you, you <laughs> got to watch, uh, you gotta watch a, uh, the thing of her apology. It's uh, her yeah. and the black dude. Oh, she's apologizing, apologizing to Snoop. Snoop Dogg. But, I mean, it's, it's a string of, uh, of linking verbs. There's no, she doesn't say any words. She's like, I'm as numb. We come, did it, and said the thing. And <laughs> nah, I'm saying, you know like, what I mean? What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. yeah. What are you going to do? The, the country is just going in the right direction. Um, <laughs> how are you feeling about this whole shit, this, the shutdown and, and what's going on? So, um, and, and stand-up, how do you feel about that? I don't know. I haven't gotten to the doing one of the shows. I keep getting those emails about like or texts about Yeah, like, streaming. The virtual stand-up show with a screen of box faces, and I'm just like, I'm not there yet. I don't think. Yeah. It's, <laughs> like, I don't think. I think just the timing and rhythm is going to be off. It took enough to get you to like broadcasting like this on everything. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, it's, it's every every young comic that never got on stage ever is is streaming. They're on a streaming show, which is crazy because you're literally in a situation where you haven't even figured out the dynamics of you, the, the intimacy of you and an audience, right? Yeah. And, and now you're going to do streaming, which would be so much more difficult to, because it's... They're not all bad, though. I've done a couple. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes they it stop. feels good. No. I'm sure, no. They can. I'm, sure, I'm sure they can be uh, as good as they can be, but I'm just saying... Yeah, I'm, as good as they can be. But at their very best, I mean, like, uh, I just don't know what the... I mean, it's, if you're looking at just like, Get a joke out and stay sharp on something you can do. Yeah, like is it is it fucking with stand up on the same level? No, but if you're thinking that, that's on you. That's your fault for trying to think fucking talking through a phone is going to be the same as being in a live room. However, well, you funny, the, you will get laughs. Plus you the, will see people react with you live time. I've seen yeah, it. But, it pl- pl- but plus the, the 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 latency, like we just had, uh, we had what you call it on uh, Louis Ramey. We had Louis Ramey on the show, which he's out in Atlanta. Um, and we had him on, and he had like the, his internet was real shitty, and it was like a you know it's like a two second delay. Like it wasn't a it wasn't a delay where you blink and you blink. You know, it's like it, it, it's close. It was like two, three seconds. And, and so we were like, I, I, and, you know, I would say something funny and then he would laugh three seconds. It just, and Lewis, even that, Lewis is a, uh, he's a cruise ship comic too, man. Yeah, like, yeah now he does nothing with cruise ship. Rap. That is yeah. a, cru- who's going to get on a cruise ship for another couple of years? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, think about how are they going to go? <laughs> Look, if, if you still have social distancing, right? Even if you do the olive tree, right? To do six feet apart, how many people could you fit in there? Twenty, maybe. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's like what the, what's gonna happen is, or you know, it's a guess. Obviously, who knows about anything? Mm. But because uh, I think the only club I heard that is gonna open so far that's and they announced already what they're gonna do is uh, Zanies Nashville. Okay. Gonna open at a uh, half capacity. All right. So it's probably how many people is the whole? I mean, two two hundred something. Yeah, so like you're going to a hundred people. What the problem with that is, so the, the, they're not going to let people come in the theaters and shit like that for a while, right? In the stadiums, so the theater and stadium people are going to come down to, mm. are going to the clubs, which is going to push out, like it's going to make less weekends available for like me who was like doing the clubs all the time, right. and then right. also you have to weigh out the value of going. Like, do I put myself through the one? Just already the, the stress of hopping on planes every weekend and shit, doing that uh, as it was before, mm-hmm. and going all over the place, and, and the stress of that. The, the beauty of it was like when you're selling tickets, you know, at all, you could like make money off the door deal. You right know? now, you can't like, even make money because you can't even get money. full capacity. Now you can't make the money. It's like so, you go back to like guarantees, and you start saying like, "Is it worth going through all this effort for a twelve hundred dollar check minus my flight?" Yeah. Minus Expensive, you know what I mean? You're like, how? yeah. Like, if it makes you're sense, you're not even gonna break even. Yeah, does it make sense to do it? 
you know what I mean? Like to go back to that thing. And then also only having one of those a month or something, because again, like your Bill Burrs and shit are coming back down the clubs. They're going to have to. Right. Right. Well, and they'll sell out the club, but again, like, but at half capacity and six shows. Yeah. It's just like, I don't know what the value is going to be. And they'll have to do well, like six shows to, you I, know, I, to kind of. I wonder if the thing is, is they won't book a Bill Burr or whatever, because to pay him money to fill up a club at a hundred people, you might be able to do that cheaper with somebody else and not have to pay whatever you got to pay Bill Burr. It's true. It's very true. Yeah. You, you don't know, need to so. fill up a room as a big, but I mean, for the club's stake though, especially in the times the clubs are going to go through. Yeah. You know, it won't matter once this whole thing is fucking over and you have like, you know, video and pictures of Bill on your stage, the value of that's worth that to them. You know what I mean? Look who yeah. Played. Yeah. Yeah. But to, I mean, I don't even know. I don't even see how to like you like you talk about the, the, the olive tree would hold 20 people. Like, how do you how do you make money off of 20 people? When you're used to selling out 120 people, sold out money, food, everything. Downstairs, the store downstairs, I think, taps out at like, uh, it's like a, close to 100. It's not 100, okay. it's something. Right, it's but, uh, but it's tight. It's really tight. And to right, get six. Right. I mean, but even say it's like, even say it's 30 people. Yeah. You know, if you don't stay like crazy strict on six feet, but you know, like every other table has yeah. to it, yeah. kind of thing. Like, it's just like, who's going to be. Also, even like your biggest fans, man, like. I could, you know, I'm huge fans of of uh, a lot of musicians, you know. Like, right, right. You know, it was like, hey, Madison Square Garden, your favorite band's playing. You're like, I might skip them this year. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, you know, it's really, it's really weird. Really the one fucking uh, in, a, in a fucking packed stadium. Even, I'm saying, even when they go, everyone coast is clear. until there's like yeah. a scene. Really, when would you? Yeah. Go, All right, we're gonna try opening things up. Like, are you gonna go to one of those first couple Knicks games? Like, hell no. Yeah. I think people even, will. I think people are. There's even enough if they people get the vaccination, even no. But the, I'm saying whoever does is our control experiment of to uh, see what what's going to happen in the future. Back. So not, right, if, if if they would sell it to capacity, the garden people would go tomorrow because there's people like uh you know Lewis in the world still crowing that like you know this it's, is all bullshit. I guess so you're like, I is he not. really? Is Lewis still of course saying that it's bullshit? It's, of course it is. Yeah. So, I have tardy. ten people. I know ten people that died. Really, personally, yeah. That I, you know, like, from like different of friends and shit like that. You mean work coworkers, friends, uh, you know, friends in my neighborhood, friends when I used to, you know, run the streets back when, uh, uh, parents of people that I know and stuff. I have at least ten people that I know that died of it. Yeah. And even if they didn't die of it, like you know, I mean, when you think about it, like Chris Cotton. Like who knows if you know? Because he had a uh, he had asthma and shit. He had yeah. really bad asthma. So and that was what January something like that. It was that. like December. December, right? But they right around that time frame. It sure. could have been. It, it could have been. And then you have people who I had a friend of mine. Look, like they came. Was Chris that recently? Yeah. It some. It was like towards the end yeah. of last year. Yeah. Yeah. See, if yeah. I remember. I'll look it up. I thought he had an actual heart attack. But he had it, it, yeah. But it was it, it, he definitely. They were saying that he hadn't breathe. He was he had problems breathing, and uh, just so the, the fans good. know, Chris. Chris was on the show. Chris, we had Chris on the show. Yeah, we did. Yeah, and he he won a comic, and he had really started writing for Comedy Central and stuff. And then he just kind of he had a, a he, he had a headache or something, and then he pulled over, and then he couldn't breathe, and then they then I think he had a heart attack because he couldn't breathe because that's he the died of an thing. embolism. Yeah. And then even Vic Henley, what they oh, were saying. Did he really? Because that's the same. Yeah. You're about to say Vic Henley. Same thing. Pulmonary embolism, blood clot. But now they yeah. are finding out that this thing uh, does will. that as well. Yeah. Well, I know that. I know this. It's it's. Uh, I've seen a lot of like R.I.P. stuff on my feeds on Facebook stuff. Yeah. And of friends that you follow and people that even people that I you know whatever fans of the show and stuff that. You follow. I just feel like the last couple of weeks, I've seen a lot more of that, even if it's not Corona related. No, I know for sure. But I'll tell you this. Yeah. I swear to you, I, I, I hate this. If you are going to do the thing and you want to get out to the world, which I'm, I, I have no problem with it. Like, uh, I didn't do like a social media, like Vic Henley, you know, rest mm. in peace thing. Like we got on the radio show one day and we talked about him for like five minutes. Like, mm. yeah. it's like celebrated him and told right. stories what a good guy he was and, and and moved on i don't do that way so if you're a person who wants the world to hear that you know 
RIP this person in your, in your eulogy, you better, it, your, it is your duty right now. Fucking say what they died from. Like, say what they died. I, I oh, hate, yeah. Don't leave it vague. That's right, shitty. Some lady I saw the other day that was like in some fan a group thing, I think of like the, 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 the heavy metal cruise ship that I would perform on. Yeah. It was like somebody just from like that forum or whatever and they put a thing like thank you for your things like it's, i can't believe that I, i'm the parent of a seven-year-old who died and it's just and it's like her these pictures of her kid who died i guess so, wait jay i'm not sure what you're saying are you saying to no, see that it was covid or or to say what it was or I, I'm, I'm 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 not following i'm sorry i'm just saying like i saw a lady post a thing about her son dying but doesn't yeah it's from and you just keep going like wait it's like like you put this out into the world now. Like now, you got to tell me: Did your son die from like COVID-related shit? Oh, okay, okay. Just to be no. clear, it's, it's, yeah, it's just like it's a mystery. There's so many yeah. RIP things, and it's just like if you're gonna tell the world that someone died, dude, you got now. You right now, you have to say why. Yeah, it'll yeah. make yeah. clearly you're gonna make people anxious. Yeah, you know, I think news you, articles do that shit too. Yeah. Get clicks. Yeah, you, you, so it's like you're gonna be you're gonna be anxious because you're hearing like more people are dying from COVID, but also. Now seven year olds to the, to the benefit of like if they go heart attack or whatever kind of car accident whatever it is you go like oh okay well it's like you know not everything in the world is everyone's dying from COVID it's right, right. almost like clout chasing not saying yeah yeah right, yeah you see people death, doing yeah. a little bit for attention so so it's, so it's like of when uh, when when your nana just died from fucking old shit <laughs> yeah but it, but here's the other thing is a lot of people who didn't even won't even go to the doctor because of the COVID so. You have some shit where a motherfucker would you normally go in and check it out. He'd be like, "Nah, I'm just stay home and and I'll ride this shit out." And then they're dying out, dying at home, you know. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, it's it's six and a half, half dozen where you you don't even know, you don't even know. I mean, it's it's COVID has affected every aspect of healthcare, so that you just you don't even know, even even if it's not directly, indirectly, and and they're not even counting. The, the people that died uh, that weren't tested, you know, that weren't uh, said. Andre, what the fuck are you doing? You, it looks like you're trying to, like, pick something out of your teeth or something looking at the camera. You love like, looking at me, don't you? No, you just wave them back <laughs> you and forth, do. rubbing your teeth with your fingers. What are you doing? Ah, uh, Harry, you like my face. <laughs> uh-huh. Because there's two other grown-ass niggas here. They ain't None of them are rubbing once. their gums with their fingers. But you... Want to know what I'm doing with my lips? Don't act like I'm the weirdo, huh? Andre. Don't it's act like right, I'm the weirdo. Freak. You rub your teeth on uh, your fingers. Let me finger tell you, uh, Jay. Andre's been in the house for five weeks straight. Not like literally, not, not even outside the house. I mean, he went to the store. Uh, Finally, after like last yesterday, week. Like, he was in the house. He had a uh, him and his girl had some sniffles, and had, and he he's been locked in the basement for for how many weeks, Dre? Uh, it was what, four, like 15, 16 days? It was just 15, 16 yeah. days in the basement by himself, not even talking to the other members well, of his family. Your girl was with you, though, right? Yeah, my girl was with me. Yeah, yeah, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you eat? I well, his mom slide, was still they'd good. Slide him like a tray of food under the door. They would just slide it, slide yeah, it. Man. Like, it was on some like, lockdown like shit. Count of Monte Cristo, they would just open that little door and slide it in. Yeah, he so he's a little out of his mind, he's losing his mind. No do right. I'm, I feel regular. I don't know about what y'all talking about. This is I would have said this shit if no COVID would have happened. <laughs> I think that uh, <clears throat> the good, you know, the optimism I could only have only is that like <clears throat> it will it will be over at some point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, whether we live or die through it is you know I guess like, <laughs> it's gonna be over one way or the other. It's like in 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 the year it'll be resolved in. The year 2021, and by 2022, people will be back to saying, like, you know, everybody's a racist or a woman hater. Yeah, but the, the other good times. The, the, the good old days. But the, uh, the, 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 I think the other thing is, though, that it's, uh, we, we, like, how, you know, we get so accustomed to the new normal. You know what I mean? Like, no matter what it is, we, we just get accustomed. But there's a lot of dudes, a lot of dudes who just, you know, because it was so many comics. Yeah, just you know, floating around. A lot of motherfuckers are gone because they, you know, they couldn't afford New York, didn't have any income, yeah. never, and and you know, just here trying to make it, like, you know, like the fucking Sinatra song and shit, and and they're just gone. Because I mean, I'm, I'm lucky as hell that I uh, didn't. I was like, 
over the last year having that debate like, do I move to a place? You know, me and Christine have our own place, and it's right, very, right. very small. It's a great place, but it's very small. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you, as I'm in my 40s, you want some amenities in life, you know? Right, but it's also in the city. Like, you are right in the city. Like, you can come out and walk to spots. But. No, exactly. No, it's great. It was great in that regard. It was very small. <clears throat> so, you know, this year, I was having those thoughts about, like, do we go? Do I move to a place that I can afford, but, like, I can afford providing I work every week? Right. You know, every weekend and stuff like that and, and, and get like a, you know, a nicer, uh, roomier place. But, uh, I mean, thank if I did that, I'd be, I'd be fucking ruined right now. Right. Yeah. If, if, I, if I moved into like, you know, a slightly above my means was what I was yeah. thinking. But that, does this have, this that, whole- I wouldn't even fuck real estate. I wouldn't even buy anything in New York. Like now, now I'm like, I just want to, I'll rent my apartment forever and buy yeah. a fucking house like like where I'm in, where it's like you can get not in this fucking hillbilly town, but I mean like <laughs> a little more populated, but a place where you can have like you know a fucking backyard. And shit. You're in upstate New York by the, uh, that area, right? Sort of. Yeah. Not to give specific oh. location. You're not hiding out on the lamb. You're just no. It's meth country up here. Meth <laughs> uh, country. I almost got to know with a guy at the, 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 the bums in, of New York City. Are extremely aggressive because nobody's gonna touch him. <laughs> right. Dude on my block, I literally all I could do is like. Fuck it. He'll go fuck himself, and then as he never even turned around because he walked by. He saw when he was walking by. I could see it was a guy looking for like a pro. He's just looking no. for a problem. It's like a young, uh, one of those young white fucking junky kids from the East Village. Those shit. Yeah. The ones that sleep on Sixth Avenue. Yeah, they got like a pit bull or some shit with them. Yeah, always a sign that says some shit. They try to put the girl with the titties out to, with yeah. the sign while she's got like uh, her fucking. Rhythm section behind her of <laughs> dirty asses, safety pin in the nose, dudes. Yeah, dude. those guys. And I was just like, dude, I don't. I've already seen this guy on the block, like getting the shit with people. And I live on a police station block. Yeah, yeah, right across the street. Uh, yeah, and and uh, I've seen this guy. So I just said to Christine, I was like, right, let's just go back inside now. We were sitting on our soup one night, and as he just walks by, I was like, he just like launches, kicks one of our fucking trash cans over, kind of okay. shit. And it's the thing, it's like, you're like, you fuck. Like, you would not have done that three months ago, dude. Mm. <laughs> but I would fucking grab you, which I would have if you did that three months ago. Yeah. When it was safe. Yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, so they're, they're knowing that. So the homeless have, like, superpowers now. Yeah, the homeless <laughs> have become untouchable. Doug, because, you know, I'm still, because, I, you know, I still got, since I had the baby, and I'm going to have to do another another five years on the, with the phone company to get my pension, right? Yeah. And uh, the, um, like the homeless are running around in hordes. Like I mean, they, like the warriors. That's funny. <laughs> yo, it's it's deep. Like they, you know, you go into the you go to the cash machine and money's in there with his cart and his, his tent. He's tented out in the fucking in the city <laughs> bank. Like just crazy. And so they're then, having a ball. Yo, they's the blast. They're dominating, and they don't give a damn why. Like they go sleep in a hospital for a couple of weeks. That'd be great. They're like whatever. Yeah. Some of, and they were putting some of them in hotels. They would, they had hotels. Yeah, they putting them up in hotels. Well, and they would just wild, but I mean, like in the street, it's like I am legend and the zombies, the zombie apocalypse. Those dudes are just walking around with two different shoes and a plastic bag on it, and just, just like aggressive. Yo, let me get some. Yo, back to like you gotta be like back the fuck up. There's a bad time to be a smoker for several reasons, but obviously when you're outside, they come. Yo, big man, let me get one of them. And you're like, yo, big man, I won't even throw it to you. Get the fuck out. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, <just, laughs> like, it's like you're crazy. Walk, and, and and some people just don't give a shit. Up here, the opposite of that is this is a fucking hillbilly country. We found out we went to the one supermarket to load, mm-hmm. load up for the trip. And in there, it's like everyone, they have all the safety stuff set up and everything. And this is like a small town. So they have like the, here's free gloves and a mask if you want, you know, when you walk in. Yeah. And they have all the stuff set up and it's, it is what it is. Not a lot of teeth in that place. <laughs> um, and then a dude like, yeah, like a fucking like meth head, like trucker looking dude, like came over and just like, when we were checking out in line, he just went to like, there was like a, you know, I guess like a Mountain Dew fucking fridge, like next to the line we were in. And he just with no mask or gloves at all just comes like right next to us. And he's like dicking around in that fridge. And it's like, uh, and I was rubbing, like, a, I was rubbing like, his hands all over the sodas. Like, what do I want? What do I want? Pretty much. But I was like, dude, dude, I'm like, back up, dude. Come on. Back up. What do you say? 
so nothing. He didn't even look back. He just kind of did walk away. But then he came back like a minute later and like lingered. And, and I was like, dude, step fucking back, man. Like, come on, please. <laughs> and, he, and then he gave me the, the, the look back, the fuck you look back. And then did walk away. But like, it was still a thing. Like, you fucking junkie fuck. Everybody, there's everybody's fucking retarded. I went to the supermarket yesterday and the nigga was in there buying the scratch off tickets. <laughs> like, you gonna win ten dollars, bro? <laughs> the fuck you risking your life? And he scratched the shit in the supermarket. Yeah, I, I don't know. Right I don't, the nigga had the mask like, on, the like, out. They're super, super scary like it was this old white lady and she had her bags and stuff and she was like please please step back please i'm like you guys eight feet she was like please please just wait i'd and rather she, that yeah. i'd much rather that type of energy versus the nigga that's going let me get two more scratch offs yeah. yeah no bro we have, we have the whole when you order food and you're like leave it by the door walk yeah. away <laughs> hell yeah dropping off plutonium yeah it's crazy. Fuck, it's uh, and then we leave the it machine. outside. That's the only good thing about the uh, the escape we made for these two weeks that we're in is that, like, I mean, my hands are coming back to life because they looked fucking crazy from the nonstop hand washing because right, right. I was, just, every time I walk outside my front door to, like, just go, I'm going to stand in the sunlight for five minutes. Yeah. Uh, when you come inside, like, not only like do you like should you wash your hands like you you have to because of what yeah. all, all the fear they've pumped into us for it right 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 so scrubbing yeah. my hands every everything's just like a tense anxious thing what's great about being up here is once we're in here like uh the fight like, you know we go outside on the deck and smoke a joint look at the creek and then go back inside and sit down and watch tv you know what i mean like yeah, you know, yeah. it's really like, simple I wash my hands like i didn't do anything you know what i mean like uh yeah. You wash your hands like normal before you eat. After you take a shit, you know what I mean. Yeah. The things do, but it is funny. Like so, that's the only freedom of like the situation is like how you. In, I mean, how you and Chris. I mean, see, here's the thing about like a lot of. I'm, I've been getting a lot of like one on one consultations, like like through the roof. Because oh, everybody's all stuck. like I can't be with this chick anymore. And yeah, I, oh yeah, yeah. Like because it's it's accelerated to the level where they're like they're literally like um. You know, I never really liked this person, and I and I liked them and at a minimal. But I had to go to work, and I had things I could do, and I and now they're stuck in yeah, yeah. in this relationship with somebody that. And I've been getting the, I, you know, I had a dude call me up. He was like, "Yo, I, I really need to talk to you." My wife smacked me in the face, and I'm like, "Dog," <laughs> I'm like, "I'm like, if your wife smacked you in the face, you should have called me way before this." Right? <laughs> yeah, dude. That's a comfort. <laughs> That's a comfort I would never understand. Yeah, I'm, I'm well, like. <laughs> here's what a lot of women do, do, which I've had weird arguments in my life about. When uh, girls, you say something like, you know, ball busting or like making a joke, making fun of them. Like playful. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what I mean? Where they, yeah. they think it's the, the playful like face smack to a guy because they're like, I'm a girl. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. And that, that will turn all of my humor right around to like, I'll never <laughs> fucking do that again. Yeah. yeah I, 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 I wouldn't make that joke to you. Don't yeah. fucking make it to me. You know, it's like, right, oh. right, right, right. I, I couldn't make it to you. It's you such know? a thing. It's such a thing of like, uh, like, like I had Veronica Mosley. She said, I'll punch you in your fucking mouth. I go, at what point in time could I ever say to you, I'll punch you in your fucking mouth? Yeah. At what point? And if I can't do it, then you can't do it. So <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll punch you in the mouth and you go, I will put you through the floor of wherever <laughs> place you are. What can you say? I was Shawn Michaels sweet chin music. You, you like, and do the dance afterwards. So. Dude, my, chick, my chick is not meek at all, but no. she's never tried to bitch me ever. Yeah. Because she's, she, but here's the thing. You, I mean, you and, you and your lady, y'all spend time with each other. Y'all are always with each other. And, like, you genuinely like each other. You know? Yeah. I'll tell you what, we've actually fought less. Uh, than usually when I go away enough because it's probably like in a weird way less stress of other things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like uh, being together, we we always do the radio. She's on the bonfire. She's the yeah. Producer Producers. On the bonfire. So like, um, you know, uh, we're we're doing that show today every day together. We're, we're usually together, but I go away so much Thursday, mm -hmm. Sunday morning. Yeah. That mm -hmm. time away is like she really gets to do her own thing. Like, so she probably feels even more than me uh, the idea of like. Hey, I don't have my thing to go 
just sit and call my girlfriends or have a friend come over and shoot the shit all night. You know what I mean? Like a different pace. Yeah, but Chris like genuinely thing. likes being around you and she yeah, likes sure. your life. That's what and, I'm saying. But if she goes and does, like, you know, she does yoga in the other room and fucking jumps in the shower and I make phone calls all day and yeah. I, you know, uh, I'm doing the other podcast aside from the bonfire. So yeah. I got that stuff keep me busy and doing other. What's the new podcast? podcast? The, the other podcast. Well, yeah, Legion of Skanks. Right. Oh, like, oh, Legion. But I mean, are you doing rock something else with Yo, Bonfire or no? No, SDR. But no, but me and Soda and Ari Shafir are currently doing a new podcast called Sixth and Jump. Okay. The address one twenty one Jump Street, and we're yeah, yeah. Going through, we're going through episode by episode of the original twenty one Jump Street. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Breaking down the episodes, and it's a yeah. uh, it's definitely a niche thing, but it's been so fun because that show. I'm 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 cr- I'm taking this speech on tour. Uh, I'll warn you. So it's like I've said this a lot. But if you remember the show Twenty One Jump Street, yeah, yeah. But the young young police officers that they were able to put in the thing. The five, It's a team of five, or I'm sorry, four of the most conspicuous people ever in the world to go undercover. The handsomest guy in the world, Dom DeLuise's kid, super hot yeah. black chick, and Ma- uh, it was uh, Malik Yoba, right? Malik Yoba's. Uh, oh, you thinking the dude that was. Uh, you're thinking of New York undercover. Oh, right, 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 right. right, right oh, this right, is right, Johnny right. Depp. This is 1987. Yeah, this was Johnny Depp. Yeah, right, 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 right. Holly Robinson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They go yeah. undercover in high schools. Now, you'd have to assume wherever your headquarters is, you have a jurisdiction space of, let's say, generously, you have a 15-square-mile a a jurisdiction. There has to be 7,000 schools in that jurisdiction for them to have a new – that many cases every Only, week yeah. for a team of four and not the word spreading around to the next school like hey you know what the narcs yeah he goes if these if anybody comes in in the middle of the school year they look 30 and they're <laughs> and they always use their real first name so if and they're, they're beautiful or yeah if it's tom judy doug or uh, harry <laughs> th- those are the narcs do not immediately start asking them to join a business with you selling drugs <laughs> Yeah, it's it's, it's crazy. It's just, it's a ridiculous I, show. The um, the 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 crazy thing is that like you had um like um I, it's funny because I get a lot of guys I got like Chris is into girls like she's in she's she so she she likes women as opposed to a lot of times I get qu- quest, qu- questions about she'll do it for threesomes people. they want to do the threesomes but they want to do the threesomes. Um, and the girl has no interest in women. How do I get my girl to into threesomes? Yeah, and it's like usually. she's got to want to do threesomes. I, 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 in in my uh, <coughs> when I was married to mm. Carla and and dicking around with stuff like that for a little while after I got caught cheating really bad. Yeah, yeah. And it was kind of like we had a discussion where I was like, I don't know, maybe we'll try some shit like together. And she was like, and, and not, I don't. I think she enjoyed the situations when they came up. But I mean, uh, you, this is when you could tell it's a problem. When you go, hey, you want to see tonight? Maybe if uh, somebody wants to hang out, what is, and, and it'd be like, like uh, what, what, we have to have somebody. You you can't just hang out with me. And when it started being, like, you're like, yeah. oh, I realized immediately. I'm like, oh, you're doing this for me. Yeah, yeah, it's I'm a really big difference. About yeah, Christine. Now, Christine, uh, not drinking for two years now has definitely. It hasn't stopped anything, but it's like slowed it down because her yeah. not she still has that little like. I mean, Christine used to come over and be like, "Yo, that chick's coming home to fuck us tonight." Yeah, yeah, no way. And she would call her shot and fucking hit it sometimes. Yeah, and uh, and now it's like if I go, I think this chick wants to fuck us. It's like she's so like, oh man, is, are people looking that we're talking? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like she's just so like, oh, she's the- nervous about it now. She's nervous about the action. She's nervous about like where do we come up? You know, what does it look like to other people? Or? We hooked up with uh, fans of the show before, and she's mm-hmm. like, as a comic, that's like, I don't think I fucked somebody who wasn't a fan for the last twenty years. <laughs> you know, right, what I mean? right, right, right. Yeah. Remember like, Kenny? Wasn't for, it Kenny Rogerson? They were talking about the Boston comedy scene. He goes, "It was like eight years before I realized you could date somebody who wasn't a waitress." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Was was weird. It always bugged me out about about uh, huh? Say that it again. I said my ex wife worked in a comedy club. Uh, yeah, he worked in comedy clubs. That's it's where we meet. Jay, every look, Jay Jay's cause look. Jay's a funny dude. He's a smart dude. He's achieved a level of success, um, far bass. You know, like a steady level of success. Um, and Jay's always been like. 
like I've seen you where you could it's obvious that some chick is into you and you don't believe that the chick is in you. Like you're always yeah, like Yeah. Yeah, you know? yeah. I, I've put I've done that a lot. What I got better at in the world was when I was younger and if it was a girl that I felt was out of my league, I would just straight up like I, I would start a whole second life. <laughs> like <laughs> I did that like more than once. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And like uh and because I couldn't just be like and now it's like if I'm, you know, and Christine's like, oh, with it, if I, if, like, I could ask her when I'm on the road, like, are you cool if I do something, if it comes my way, and if she says yes, she says yes, she says no, I don't, mm -hmm. I mean, like, uh, damn, I had a good point about this, oh, oh on the road, if it's, if it's a girl, it's like, I think it's like out of my league, which has happened plenty, you know, where I'm like, this girl, she doesn't really want to see me naked, what's happening here, <laughs> I, I do have more of that, like, I don't have, see that though, and go, like, I have to make you, like, a girlfriend, and have you, like, be, like, like you know, I love yeah, you and yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like you could be like, "Hey, that was really awesome." Uh, maybe next time I come to town, you know what I mean? But yeah. it's me and a girl or something like that. I just don't get like a like you know. Me and Christine have hooked up with like young, really pretty girls before and stuff. And it's just like I don't. I like to. She doesn't even worry that I'm like. It's like, are you gonna start calling that girl all the time? Like I don't even think about it. I'm just like, no. It's like I get it. I get yeah, it. Yeah. It can happen. You know what I mean? Like yeah. You know, we're never not going to get pussy again. It's fine. But this is, you know, what happens a lot of times when you have when you have really creative people. Um, creative people don't recognize that they are the source of the creativity. They always think it's the thing that they're doing. It's the podcast, or it's this, or it's that, and they don't understand it. It's like even doing stand up. But you know, um, by far, and I've I've said this on the show. I've said this around, and I said by far. Nobody in the bu nobody in the business has ever or does crowd work better than Jay. That Dude, thank you, man. Hands down, no. I, and I'd fight somebody. <laughs> I would fight somebody to tell me different. And the reality is that, but that the the ability to kind of do that, the ability to interact, is because who you are is an authentic human being in the first place and so it comes so it's like um you know like i'll give you an uh, uh i mean i'll give you an idea of like if somebody's like real hacky right uh shout out to aaron bird and uh <laughs> but we'll we'll have conversations they'll do crowd work but it won't be real crowd work because like we it's set lines sometimes yeah we we yeah. Can, jay jay's inspiration was always a tell and patrice yeah, and exactly. And, as far as and that was stage, yeah. my inspiration, and so we kind of have that come from that the same school of thought. And one thing he used to say is, never ask a question on stage unless you really want to know the answer. If you don't really care, don't ask the question because people will listen to a real conversation. Right. If you're on a bus and somebody's talking about their relationship, everybody's listening because it's a real conversation that's happening in real time. So when you're on stage, if you're asking questions and you're really interested in the answer, you're, you're listening and you're really engaged in the answer, even if it's not funny, people are, you have people's attention. Engaged. And then you just have to trust your funny to the point where you get to the point where you go, I'll, I'll, I'll find where the funny is. So yes. That's uh, what I've explained always with uh, when I would do the crowd work show that I would host, the What's Your Fucking Deal show. And uh, we bring people up. In the beginning of producing that show, people would come up and they go, "Yo, I don't want to go last." And I'd be like, "Why?" Like, I was like, "Why? What difference does it make?" Right. Because everybody's ever going to be asked, like you know, every question. Yeah. So I go, "Well, there's no way they've been asked every question." Right. Right. That's the nature of the show. And two, it, uh, and this made people feel confident enough to do it. I was like, "Dude, someone just came to you and handed you." 15 pieces of information about exactly that you can use in your the first yeah. person has to kind of get the are you guys a couple are the yeah. first guy actually has like the you like have the, the, most, the most blank space to work with but sometimes right. it's nice to have a zillion things to you know when you when you get up on stage and you can first right away go joe and karen you guys are a crazy fucking couple because everyone knows joe and karen yeah yeah exactly yeah. And you do exactly. take on it that's i i've never I, I think it's polite but i guess like it's always find it weird because I remember the people in my life that would make me do something different than I do going yeah. in front of them. But I've had so many like hosts and stuff on the road that are like, I usually do a bunch of crowd work too, but I just, you know, I know it's your thing a lot. So it's like, I don't, I don't want to 
do it. So it was like, you know, don't understand what we're doing. You, you have no idea what's going on here. I'm like, go do your fucking crowd. I go, go. And like, if, if I don't hear it, whatever. If I repeat a question, it's already been answered. Like I'm prepared to handle that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's not a. Uh, yeah, but that's that's when you get to the. You, but you've done this so much that you trust. You trust that you you the the funny is there. So it's like the thing I always say that the thing that makes you like in relationships, the thing that makes you bulletproof is that you you really are the guy. You are you really are the person that you are. If you're faking it, then you're always worried about being exposed. And so you 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 know just in years. I mean years of just us you know being at the Boston and you know just working this stuff out you it's there's so many situations that you've experienced that you um you know that you're not afraid of what the outcome is and even if the outcome is something that happens uh extraordinary that you don't have an answer to you can literally go fair enough and people will laugh because it's a real moment where you where you got stumped you know or where it was just something you didn't think about you know yeah, leave all the mistakes. It's genuine, no matter what. We're, making, we're having a funny conversation. That was right. always one of two things. <laughs> when I'm like, "Hey, are you two a couple?" and people go, "Ah," oh. <laughs> I'm like, "What?" They go, "We already got into it with them." I go, Somebody else talked to them. And they're like, "Yes." And I'm like, "All right." So then someone tell me, "Are they married?" And they're like, "Yes." <laughs> like, have you ever uh, have you ever come inside of her in a pool? <laughs> See if she can queef it out and it looks like seahorses. <laughs> and then the crowd was like, oh, I was like, oh, did, did nobody else asked that. That's right. <laughs> like, 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 give everybody a shot, dude. Who gives a shit? <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, a, it. com- a level of, a level of comfort. And then you, so they think that you're, you know, they, it's like them going, I don't want to do crowd. Well, you're not, what you're doing, it, like, you see the difference. There's a difference. But what's, what's funny is there's always the, with, um, with comics especially, there's always the the um the compartment the compartmentalization of how interesting we are on stage, and then we forget if we don't have the stage, then we're not interesting. But but the reason why it's authentic is because you're really that dude. Like you're the dude who you are, and I mean, and we used to say that all the time. Is Patrice was the same dude that he was on stage that he was off. And, it, you know, I mean, there was little exaggerations and technique and stuff like that. But I think he had, and I, and I think he was leading towards it. I was so excited to see where Patrice, what his comedy was going to even continue to evolve into. But I mean, like, uh, he, I don't think, he did it in, in his jokey jokes. Yeah. But before he started going to, like, hardcore, like, uh, like theology and storytelling stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in his jokey jokes, he had some self-deprecation. But yeah. I remember him making a decision to stop. And it was because I, I've told you this story, but we had the weird like argument and we never even had an argument, but like I heard through the grapevine, uh, you know, the telephone back to me that was like, Patrice says you're taking his material. And that, well, you, you got that too. And it bummed me out so, so much, but I was like, uh, this is way, way, way years ago. So, but th- was it, was it the material or like the essence they were trying to say you take I mean, the here's, Well, here's what it is. It's by the time a telephone back to me, it was that Patrice said you're taking his material. So right. I, what I just did was for two days, he just noticed when I would go to the cellar at night. And this is, I, I wasn't working the cellar yet. This is when we were doing shows at Caroline's, but right, me, right. me and him were on shows a lot together. Right, right. And he would close and I was somewhere in the beginning. And, uh, and when I heard he said that, I didn't know how to talk to him about it because I looked up to him so much. Yeah. And I also didn't, I didn't like that because I'm like, I know for a fact I'm not doing that at all. Right. Right. And uh and so uh I just didn't kind of talk to him really much when he came into the cellar mm-hmm. meet Keith. And then I guess he asked somebody like what's going on and I'm sure I told enough people. <laughs> right, right. He me, I was still in Philly. Yeah. He called me on a house phone, actually, and he goes, uh he was like, Jay, I didn't say you stole my material. I said, We keep being on shows together, I gotta close and we're just two guys doing like fat I'm so fat jokes. Right, you know the self-deprecation. I'm fat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay. I was like, oh, well, that does make more sense. Like, sure, of course, we do both have that. Right. And he goes, um, he goes, no. What I said was, you know, we're doing that thing. He's like, but I'll be honest with you, Jay. He goes, don't you don't have to change anything you're doing. He's like, that's it's for the young fish to come knock the big fish out of the way and move them forward. He's like, right. I, he said verbalized. I'm going to stop doing all that shit anyway, all that fat shit, man. I got more stuff to say than that. And then what's funny was we had the conversation on the phone, and I was younger than him in comedy, but I 
it was good. That mentorship which from so many comics was good for just shit like this. He goes, yeah, yeah, shit's too easy anyway, man. I'm gonna move away from that and start doing some. Uh, I got some other shit to say, and then I was just mind. I'm like, well, I have other shit to say too. <laughs> you know, going, I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm gonna just go back to the same bullshit that you don't want to do anymore. Maybe I'll just do that. And it's, uh, it's an interesting thing in growth. In like, uh, you know, I don't have to be self-deprecating now because I just naturally. I mean, it's, it's part of my genuine personality. Right, right, right. It was often that's that's the best thing about also dealing with going with the variables of the audience. Right, going like shit. At what's going to happen here? But trust it could be funny. Yeah, that like um, I just most people are so funny. If you ask enough questions, dude, people are fucking pretty wacky. And like, yeah, yeah, everybody's a little crazy. Yeah, you could definitely turn. <laughs> people are so ready to be led in the audience, like usually. Yeah. So if you're just like, no, okay, audience, it's us against this piece of shit in the audience. Yeah, so, I. But it's it's, it's it. also a situation. Even when you talk about like, oh, this chick is out of my league. Whenever I. And I was like, I, I always felt like I know Jay. Jay's an interesting dude. He's a good looking dude. He's a, he's a nice dude. He's, you know, like, so, I mean, I never seen your package, but I'm quite sure it works fine. And, oh. and, and, and it's like, to think that anybody that you could possibly meet, especially somebody who's your fan, would in any way be as interesting as you as a person, you know, in terms of perspective and terms yeah. and yeah being fine is great but uh, nothing like a it's nothing worse than a dumb fine girl <laughs> that you want to fuck but you you don't want to fuck because you just hoping that she never opens her mouth you know it's, it's yeah, yeah. It. no i've i've been uh happy that's been a liberating thing too is like on the road like walking away from some situations you know what i mean whether yeah. it be like like i can't get a hold of like christine at all you know what i mean like if she's asleep already and i'm just like I'm not going to do the old, like, you know, I've walked away from, like, pretty fucking good-looking chick situations to yeah. me where it's just like, I can't get a hold of her, so it's like, it's I, mean, I even use that as an excuse for I'm like, I don't really feel like making the phone call and having, like, the, you know what I mean? Like, if it does make her, like, freak out at all, I'm like, it ain't worth it for this shit. Right. Exactly. But like I said, if it's a girl, it's like, she's going to want to talk afterwards and it's going to suck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, it's it's got to be worth the value of it. It always surprises That's me. That's a hellacious they, problem, I, Jay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have to yeah, talk yeah, after. That's how you know you've had a ton of threesomes where you go, oh, I yeah, don't want to talk yeah. afterwards. Yeah, can we just do this and not talk afterwards, please? You know, on the road, like here's the thing, because it's the same thing. Like, I, could, I could process fucking. I could process if Christine was like, when you're on the road, uh, I want like a guy to fuck me or something. I go, if that's what you want to do, I understand that completely. But if she was like. We went, we went to a movie first. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Family stories and shit. You know what I mean? We're going to see Avengers together. How could you yeah, do I'm, that to me? I'm, I'm fine bitch. with you getting railed, but the ice cream is just uh, a little personal. Not soft serve? I know, I know it's probably an unpopular uh, way to view things, but I, I bet it's not It's not super rare either. Do you know what I mean? Like, I get processed. No, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, you think you you think what's important is important, and then when you when you you guys have been so long that there's a level of intimacy that the intimacy is just as important as the sex as the sex, probably more important because you know after you're fucking somebody for so long, it's it's that you like them and they like you, and and the genuineness of that is what makes you attractive, and that's kind of what keeps yeah. you together. Well, well, sexiness of like you know if somebody wants to fuck and they're making it pretty clear, you're like you gotta talk to the queen. <laughs> <laughs> You got to run it up the ladder, see what comes back, mate. <laughs> run it up the flagpole and see how it flies. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yo, um, we're going to shut it down. Uh, yo, what you, you got? I guess you don't have anything to promote, right? But you can get so the six and jump fire. Bonfire is on. Uh, it's free right now, Sirius XM, for a couple more weeks to, on the app. So mm -hmm. I'm going to dance over to the bonfire. We just gang, SDR show, six and jump. That's it. Okay. All right. Social media is big jail, Chris, and everything. Appreciate you, bro. Thanks for doing it, man. I y'all love you to death. You know that. Oh, uh, yeah. Stay safe, brother. All right, Harry, talk to me real quick. Uh, go to the uh, Man School Two Hundred Two YouTube page. We're posting this episode and a lot of classic stuff as well, and so you can get all the visual stuff because there's a lot of that going on with these, uh, with especially with these Zoom uh, podcasts that we're doing while we're in quarantine and stuff. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, subscribe and share the videos, please. Yeah, great. Quick, real quick. Yo, it's Andre D. Thompson on everything. Yo, hit me up. Uh, everything with me, the Dante Nero on Instagram. Everything Dante Nero dot com. You need a one on one consultation if you're stuck with your chick or stuck with your dude and you're tired of doing dealing with a motherfucker. Call me. Go 
go to DanteNero.com, click on uh, Consult, and you can book some time with me. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? Sexual Revolution is being podcasted. I love y'all. If you like what we're doing, tell somebody. Pass it on. And uh, check out the videos on YouTube. We are out. Out.